Hey guys, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how Shizandra berry extract can help to lower both prolactin and estrogen. Hormonal imbalances are at the root of every disease state that you can think of. If you're familiar with our YouTube channel, then you're familiar with the hormones prolactin and estrogen as dominant hormones that contribute to hormonally imbalanced disease states like hypothyroidism, polycystic ovarian syndrome, prostate cancer, erectile dysfunction, and even things like male pattern baldness or hair loss. These hormones are less commonly talked about stress hormones that are secreted actually by not just the ovaries, but also the adrenal glands and the pituitary gland under conditions of stress. And although both of these hormones are often considered female hormones because of their dominant presence in the female body, the fact of the matter is male bodies too, where men increase their production of both estrogen and prolactin under various forms of stress. And considering the fact that most modern people are under the influence of some sort of stress today, most people tend to have higher levels of both estrogen and prolactin than necessary for good health. So figuring out ways to regulate these hormones is going to be key for anybody struggling with these conditions and stress in general that just want to improve their health. So whenever I come across research or information about ways, simple ways to lower the production of these stress hormones, I tend to create a video on it and share, and that's what I wanna do with you today. So what I wanna to talk to you about is this research here that shows how the use of schizandra berry extract in hyperprolactinemic mice is capable of lowering elevated levels of prolactin. And what's interesting here, and something else I wanna dive into throughout this video, is the fact that schizandra berry is often considered to be an estrogenic herb. So an herb that contains phytoestrogens that are supposed to increase the serum levels of estrogen. And if you're familiar with our YouTube channel, then you know that estrogen stimulates the production of prolactin, which is why I'm talking about both of these hormones today. It's kind of hard to talk about prolactin without mentioning estrogen because oftentimes it is elevated estrogen that's causing a rise in prolactin. So this information seems a bit counterintuitive or backwards. How is it that an estrogenic herb or a phytoestrogen rich herb like schizandra has the ability to lower prolactin? It doesn't really make much sense, but there's a simple explanation for this that I figured would be worth sharing and of interest to most people here. Now really quick, for those of you that do not know, prolactin is a pituitary stress hormone that's secreted in response to eating, response to sex, ovulation, and it's even secreted under emotional stress. And it tends to be elevated under hypothyroidism, which is really a stress disease or a stress-driven disease because the thyroid gland regulates prolactin. It also tends to become elevated under a dopamine deficiency because dopamine also tends to regulate prolactin as well. And usually both hypothyroidism and a dopamine deficiency is driven by stress. Hence the reason I call prolactin a pituitary stress hormone. It really tends to only elevate during stressful conditions. For example, prolactin gets its name from its ability to increase the size of the mammary gland and produce breast milk. And the fact of the matter is, pregnancy is a stress on the body, but in this way it's a helpful adaptive response that helps the mother feed its child, but still usually at the expense of the mother's health. So generally speaking, you wanna make sure your prolactin levels are not very high or chronically elevated. It's normal for some prolactin to increase again in a response to eating, even in response to stress, obviously during pregnancy, and a response to sex and mating or ovulation but when it's chronically elevated, you start to run in a lot of issues. And if, again, you've watched our YouTube channel, you're familiar with prolactin's roles in everything from acne to hypothyroidism to hair loss to PCOS and even breast cancer and osteoporosis. So you wanna keep it regulated. And getting back to the study, it turns out that the use of the natural compounds isolated from schizandra berry, so in a schizandra berry extract, possess not just antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-diabetic effects, but it has an anti-prolactin effect. And according to the study, a compound in schizandra berry extract known as gomacin actually is capable of reducing prolactin levels in the pituitary and in the serum in immature female rats with hyperprolactinemia. Now this is really great news because there are only so many substances and natural substances that lower the levels of prolactin. Most people tend to take a drug that lowers prolactin, and obviously this can have adverse or negative side effects. But the question is now, how is it that something like schizandra has the ability of lowering prolactin? Well, there are probably numerous mechanisms that the study doesn't talk about and that I'm not aware of, but one thing I'm aware of is the fact that 
Estrogen tends to stimulate the production of prolactin, and despite the fact that schizandroberry contains phytoestrogens, it does actually have the ability to lower estrogen, especially in people that have high levels of estrogen due to xenoestrogen exposure. So xenoestrogens are the estrogen mimicking substances in things like BPA, in plastic products in other words, and in the environment you're going to find them in pesticides and herbicides and all the things that contain these toxic substances. And so the problem with these xenoestrogens is that they bind to the estrogen receptor and they increase the activity of estrogen cellularly throughout the entire body. However, phytoestrogens, although they exert a subtle estrogen mimicking effect, the one benefit that they have in terms of the exposure to xenoestrogens and very high levels of estrogen is that the phytoestrogens can actually bind to the estrogen receptor and block the xenoestrogens from binding to them. And in general, the xenoestrogens are intensely more estrogenic than the phytoestrogens. You would have to consume tons and tons of phytoestrogens for them to increase the levels of estrogen in your body. So even the studies that point out that the use of things like schizandra can increase the blood levels of estrogen, this is only usually doing so because these phytoestrogens and the fibers in things like schizandra, the, the lignans, can actually bind with circulating estrogen in the body, which might temporarily increase the blood levels, but they bind to it to escort it via the liver. So one of the major properties that Sajandra has and talked about in traditional Chinese medicine is this ability to promote liver health and it actually in this way can help the liver bind with the estrogen in the blood and metabolize it and get rid of it from the body. So in general, not all phytoestrogen substances are going to be highly estrogenic. If you have a severe case of estrogen dominance, you might want to avoid them altogether temporarily, but a small amount of something like schizandra, taking therapeutically in a tonic fashion, can actually help to protect your body from the very, very estrogenic xenoestrogens, which are usually the cause or a more dominant cause of high levels of estrogen and prolactin. So tying this all together, schizandra's anti-prolactin effects might have a lot to do with its ability to actually lower the production of estrogen and block the xenoestrogens from binding with the estrogen receptor. And keeping estrogen low is one of the safest ways and one of the smartest ways to keep your prolactin levels low because estrogen will stimulate the production of prolactin. So for those of you that have the goal of lowering high levels of prolactin, whether that's because you have known hyperprolactinemia, hypothyroidism, or if you're trying to counteract or combat something like polycystic ovarian syndrome or erectile dysfunction or even hair loss, then I'd highly recommend looking into the use of schizandra berry extract for lowering both the prolactin and the estrogen levels. However, keep in mind that we also have this video here that talks about some other very powerful herbs for lowering prolactin. And also in our Forever Healthy Hair course, we have an entire video, two videos actually, that talk about prolactin's roles in the pathogenesis of, in this case, hypothyroidism and hair loss. And we have other videos in the course that will teach you everything you need to know possible for lowering high levels of prolactin. So in addition to supplementing with schizandra and these other herbs, definitely be sure to check out that course if high levels of prolactin is something you're dealing with personally. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about schizandra or supplementing with it, you can find that in our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.